let's talk lifestyles. I'm talking about the lifestyle of the Honda Pilot, which we're gonna look at in a quick review. A drive, the underbody, the interior, and of course, I knew they didn't put washer fluid in it. I knew it! Now I'm starting to feel like a broken record with all these CUVs and SUVs I'm starting to drive. Two row, three row, crossover, you name it. From the exterior proportions, I've stopped kind of discussing some of it because they all run together. They're all trying to look similar. You don't want to deviate too far outside the box because people are buying this as a family machine or hopefully buying it as a family machine, not as something to invoke all this passion or emotion. So that's what it is. Most people tell me it looks like a minivan. And I'm okay with that as long as the interior dimensions and usability works out well. So let's talk about that. Now, the big thing with a vehicle like this, you got to have room. And that's what this has. The width is good. If you're really tall, you have long legs, there's plenty of space to stretch out. I mean, I could literally probably go Indian style in this seat. The seat height adjustment's great if you're shorter. It goes back far if you're taller. So the front space is tremendous. The physical controls. Mm. There's a lot of them. There's nothing that's going to leave you any guesswork if you've come from any other Honda. And I think that's the biggest thing about this interior that I like. There's this sense of familiarity with everything in here. And you get comfortable and it's not intimidating in any way. Your HVAC controls, the physical layout, the way that it's all designed. It doesn't require any use of the touchscreen. It's just stupid simple. You can get in here whether you've been in a car for the past 30 years or not. You're going to understand how this works. The thing that they have changed, this frees up some space, namely with the new transmission, is your gear selector is all touch, kind of not touch, but you have drive as a push button. It's push button for neutral reverse, but it's pretty intuitive, and it's one of the better ways to do this. Now, all your menu structure is controlled on the steering wheel, kind of like you would an Android phone, and the head unit is based on Google's OS or Android OS, so it makes sense that there's a back and a home button here. Your menu navigation here on the center stack or center screen for the gauge cluster is stupid simple. Getting through everything, there's no insane amount of menu jumping where you have to go from one to the other. It's very intuitive and just a great layout that they've done here. I really appreciate that. Steering wheel heater is on the steering wheel, so there's no hunting for that. And then you go to the touchscreen, which is standard Honda stuff. Again, Android based, so it is a lot of menu jumping. So it's one of those where you kind of get where you want to go, leave it there, and don't touch it. And that's kind of how I've dealt with this. Other, otherwise, it's too much of a smartphone interface. So kind of, there's just too many menus to go through, and that's the only downfall of this. Um, I, I wish there was kind of like a simple mode to kind of just have basic stuff that you want all the time and get rid of everything else, kind of like what they're doing with the Acura stuff. Now, the entire inter user interface is all touch, and I find if you're taller and this seat's farther back, the amount of stretching I have to do, like literally right now, I can't touch the screen even with my long john in my hand. And I think that's, that's one of the downfalls of having a touch interface that's mounted where it is, whether it's mounted up here or in the dash, and thank God it's built into the dash. It looks so much better. Um, but you don't have a central controller, so you always have to interact and you always have to reach over, so that, that's a, bi a big downer. But everything else, the fit and finish of this interior is great. And while it may not be like what the Hyundai and Kia products are doing with the Telluride trying to go more upscale to give you that luxury feel, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have the comfort that those vehicles have, but everything is put together well. It looks good. There's not any gimmicks in here. And it just feels like this is a purpose-built appliance where everything is so massaged perfectly to use every day, 
that's why I like it. And there's still a little bit of character and design. It doesn't feel totally cardboard, kind of like the VW Atlas is. That's a very kind of like more bland, sterile approach. This still has some geometry. There's still some different textures in here. So my point is, if you like decent interiors, this is one of the highlights of the Pilot. All right, Bruce, let's hop in the back seat. Getting in and out is easy. You got two cup holders and one door, side pocket. You have a huge center storage area. You have individual HVAC controls and vents in the middle section here, so you can control that stuff. And of course, depending on your trim level, you get a Blu-ray player with a screen in the back with a speaker, so you can keep the back passengers entertained. And the seat does do some reclining. Uh, if you don't have the back seats folded down, you get a better recline. There's also a one-touch button on the side that you have to be careful with not hitting when you're sitting here, because if you do, oh, you get body slammed by the seat because it'll push it forward automatically so you can kind of fold down these second row of seats. But I feel like even with the storage cubby in the middle here, getting in the back is stupid simple. And the third row is completely usable. But this is one of those vehicles you definitely just truthfully just go to a dealership and play around with it because you're going to know based on your size of your family the size of your body if it's going to work of course you're buying a pilot because you need three rows which means you have a a pretty hefty size third row of seats and you would hope that there's a lot of cargo capacity which clearly there is and when you fold down these seats they kind of have this two-step click to it so you can kind of recline in the third row throw them down it's a cavern but here's the negative part. The load floor is really high. And this, you know, when you look at it to me from the back, it looks like a minivan for sure. But it's not easy to lift things up in here. If you're shorter, you're smaller stature. And I can, I can think of a few things just off the top of my head that would be a pain in the ass to get to this height and load it up. And I think that's probably going to be the biggest negative part about the pilot in the back. Mechanically, you don't want to be bored to death. So I won't bore you. This has Honda's classic J-Series V6, 3.5 liter. It makes about 280 horsepower. It is great, but they have had to do some modifications to it. It now has direct injection. It has variable cylinder management, where it can shut down certain cylinders when you're cruising to aid in fuel economy. And it also has active motor mounts to help reduce vibration under start-stop conditions and also when that engine shuts down some of its cylinders to prevent vibration. Now, that tech also comes with a price, and we've seen this with Odysseys and other motors of this same type where they have engine problems, oiling issues, cylinder issues where it's consuming oil or burning oil. The active motor mounts, since there's an ECU tied to them, a standard motor mount might cost you $200 to replace, but since these are electronic, it's over $1,000. So it's one of these things probably one of the few things in terms of technology you're gonna to have to worry about on here but if you're getting this you might want to get an extended warranty or just do your own research in terms of the underbody it's pretty straightforward strut front suspension pretty much everything's open underneath it's a front wheel drive architecture which means it's front wheel drive first which you can buy this as a front wheel drive vehicle but the torque vectoring rear differential is optional on every single trim level from base all the way up to their new black edition and the torque vectoring differential is different from the on-demand all-wheel drive systems like the CRV, the RAV4s, the CX-5s, by using a, a set of clutch packs in the rear, which means it can send power to the right rear or the left rear when it's detecting slip, and it can maintain higher load more often, whereas the on-demand systems are electromagnetic clutches, and it's kind of like the urban all-wheel drive. Detects slip in the front, transfers it to the rear in short doses, those aren't high load systems. They're very small, they're very compact, they're designed for fuel efficiency, and again, more urban settings. This is more of a true all-wheel drive system, and it also has the benefit of handling better on the street, which I'm gonna talk about in the drive. And I think now is a good time to head out on the road. I'm heading out in the Honda Pilot. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I would choose this three row over pretty much any other SUV. I've been in them all. 
and pretty close to being back to back. Just got out of the Palisade, Telluride, uh, the Atlas, and what the Honda is able to do here, unlike some of the other brands, is to blend everything together in a great way. The engine, which is one of Honda's best things they've ever done in modern history, is the V6. They've carried it over here. Not only does it sound good, it has character. There's a strong me mechanical sense to it, and it gives you a little bit more driving enjoyment. So clearly, you're not going to buy this just because of the engine. Uh, but it is definitely the best engine in pretty much any three-row. The area that this really excels is it, it combines a lot of the comfort. It integrates the tech pretty much better than everybody, except maybe like the, the Telluride does a really good job with combining all the tech as well. But this is, you can tell that there's great attention to detail. Now, the, another big factor, which, you know, clearly you're not probably gonna care about, but it is important to know. Drivability. This has a lot of pull. It feels like you can drive it pretty hard. It's 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 a not a total snooze to drive, and that's a big thing that people. It's an X factor of these types of vehicles, is that I can get behind the wheel of this. Not only do I get the comfort, I get all the usability, and I, it's somewhat fun to drive. The engine, the steering, the braking is all great, but there is one negative part here, and I think this is the only ding that I could give this car in terms of the mechanical design is this nine speed automatic is just, it is not good. And the biggest annoyance is when you're just cruising along and you're kind of on the gas, off the gas, you can feel it going up, 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 down, 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 down. And you feel this constant kind of like little just G-shocks that you get from the transmission trying to decide on what it's doing. And, you know, if they put paddles on here, they're really pointless. And I said this about the Telluride and the Palisade as well you know, or the Telluride specifically, you put paddles on something like this. This is feels like an old school torque converted automatic. It's it's slow to kind of pick the gear when you need, to, need it to get going. The downshifts don't happen fast. The upshifts are very, very soft and sloppy. But when you pull a gear, it's almost hilarious at how slow this thing downshifts. It just, it doesn't do any rub matching or anything. And I think that, again, if you're gonna talk about the mechanical deficiencies, the, the tuning of the nine speed is one of the low lights of driving this. Really at the end of the day, the Pilot does everything so well that it's hard to nitpick. The little things that are wrong, you know, you're gonna have to drive it. And it depends on the type of person that you are and what you value. I still think this is the best driving SUV in its class, and it's one of the reasons that I might even choose it over a Telluride, even though the Telluride, as it gets more spec'd out, is far more comfortable, it rides softer, and it has more luxury amenities that this does not. But what Honda's done is they're not trying too hard here. And I think what they went for is tried and true. And I think that's what you're looking for in a v, uh, pretty much an SUV in this class. You want everything to work. And I feel like when I'm in here, I do feel like I'm driving the Odyssey. I just feel like I'm driving an SUV version of the Odyssey and that's kind of what everybody says when they look at it. And I don't think that's a, that's a bad thing at all. Um, you're, gonna, you're probably gonna get this as a family vehicle and I see absolutely no reason why not to put this if, if it's not already on the top of your list. <laughs> Final thoughts on the Honda Pilot, and like usual with most Honda products, I'm late to the game, but I'm glad it's been saved for last because I've been in all of these. And I would have to say I had this and the VW Atlas at the same time. 
same driveway. And I looked at both, I'm like, all right, let's drive them both. Within two days, I parked the Atlas and I drove this the rest of the week. And there's a big reason for that. So let's go over the pros. The engine. This is the best in class motor. And you heard some of the clips when I was driving it. It just has some spirit to it. It has some type of personality that's been completely gutted out of all of these. The second thing it has is it has the best balance and drivability. It's not the softest, but it's not the firmest. It's got the best ability to kind of drive like a car. It will turn in and then with the aid of the torque vectoring differential, because this has an all wheel drive system that is much like Acura's SH all wheel drive, it's not just completely on demand. So it can send power to either rear wheel, which helps you get through corners. And all that means is it's the best driving three row crossover in the segment because of it. Now you can argue styling. I'm not going to argue that it's just not for me, but who knows for you, the interior space is excellently laid out, but the negative parts are the seats are really stiff. There's they're too stiff. And I, I don't know if you really need to break it in with some super weight on it or what, but they feel like you're sitting on cardboard, namely compared to a vehicle like the Telluride and the Telluride balances everything I just talked about. And it adds the luxury. It adds the comfort. It adds the quietness. But what that removes is it's a bore to drive. It's just a straight up sofa on wheels. And if all you're doing is commuting and you're just falling asleep at the wheel and you need the most comfortable vehicle, the Telluride is better than this. And it's better than this in a lot of feature ways too. But if I had to pick a three row crossover that I had to drive every day, it would be this, but I favor the driving part better. It's even better than the CX-9 because you have a V6 in here. You have the engine and transmission that the CX-9 doesn't have. You have a turbo that kind of is like, acts like a diesel. And I, I think that's where this beats out the CX-9. But honestly, these are serious choices for a family. I'm not kidding. This is a lot of money when you get into this over $40,000 range. Get test drive each one and figure out what's best for you. Thanks for watching. Take care.